Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be continuing on what I've been sharing in the book of Mark 5. And we're going to stop at 20. In this verse, we see the encounter of Jesus and the man that had unclean spirit. The man that had the legions of unclean spirit in him. And immediately we see the power of the supernatural the work in the work of Jesus and that man and how his life was transformed within the seconds or would I say minutes of him encountering Jesus. It is written that Jesus came up of the boat. Immediately a man with an unclean spirit met him. It is written that he has been living in the tombs or tombs. No one could bind him. He had been bound with shackles and chains, but he would tear apart those chains and the shackles in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. He was uncontrollable. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. Can you imagine someone that is possessed with legions of demons? They recognized Jesus and they cry, he cried out with a loud voice saying, What have I to do with you, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? One thing I learned today, because we are being taught about the supernatural. Yes, we have all been transformed. And we have been redeemed. Once immediately you are, you, be, you, you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us that we not have a new life. The old life is gone away. But one thing I learned today was is that you cannot operate in the supernatural until you are trained trained by studying books of the bible trained by spending quality time in the word of god train yourself by fasting train yourself by worship train yourself by living a righteous life and obeying the commandments of god in the word of god because jesus was instantly recognized by those demons as the son of god i and my i mean for me and you we are children of the most high god we cannot engage in battle spirit, or warfare without being prepared. One question that was asked for us today was that a, a soldier does not get prepared at the battleground. Does he decide what weapon he or choice is going to use at the battlefield? He comes. He has to come prepared. So it is for me and you. The supernatural is our natural way of life. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, the old man is gone. The old ways are gone. You take on a new life. And it's the same kind of life that Jesus, when he was here on this earth, he performed miracles. That is how we are and we are called, we are redeemed to live, not the life of the ordinary. We are, we are redeemed to live the supernatural, to do things that is out of this world, that, that the natural man cannot do. So for us to do that, we have to be trained. We have to spend time getting wisdom and knowledge. And as we do that, we build up our spirit, man, that it will come to a point that demons will bow to, to you know, at our command. And let's continue. It says, the demons implore Jesus not to torment them. So we have the power to torment demons. We have power to tell them to go and to leave. We cannot be under the influence or the torment of demons as believers. It would take sacrifice. It would take dying to ourselves. It would take away, putting away distraction for us to be able to operate as Jesus operated on this earth. The Bible says, remember when the, 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 a man was imploring, he was trying to cast out demons. And those demons cried and said, Peter, I know, or Paul, I know. Say, but who are you? I don't know you. So we have to know and the word of God. We have to know our new life and what it, it, it offers us. So that we can operate and not be cheated on this earth. In the continuation, today we were taught that you, what you know determines your status in life. We are also taught that supernatural now becomes a new life after we receive Jesus our Lord and Savior. That is the realm that you and I belong to. In Ephesians 2, 4, it is written, But God who is rich in mercy, we all need mercy at this time. Because of his great love, which he loved us, we were dead in our trespasses, but he has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. He has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
That is the realm of the supernatural. Once you have received him, you are now raised up together in, in Christ Jesus. So that you are, and in the word of God, it says, we abide in him and he in us. So Christ abides in us and we in him. So we are no longer supposed to be suffering the same realm. Because I, I, I was listening to the mind of God. I want you guys to Google Bishop David Abioe. He's one of our uh, uh, anointed men of God. And he said, can a spirit be sick? Because once we've accepted our Lord and Savior into our life, we know with the natural realm is no longer supposed to be where we walk in and out and do our daily activities. We are now spirit. God is the spirit. And now he's, he's with, remember I just read that we are now sitting here placed in Christ. So the spirit of Christ, and we are one. We become members of God's family. He says, can a spirit be in the hospital, on the hospital bed? And if you can answer that and say no, then that means you are not supposed to be on the hospital bed. A spirit cannot be sick. That's what the understanding that we were led to on today that because we are spirit, those that worship God must worship it in spirit and in truth. And so because we are now spirit, we cannot suffer what the natural man, what is going to differentiate us from the natural man? It's our belief. It's our faith that we are no longer, we believe what the word of God says to us. In verse 10, it, verse 13, it is written, we are now in Christ you were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. In verse 19, it says, Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are now fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So if we are members of the household of God, which is the realm of the supernatural, we cannot and are not allowed to live this natural life. There might be situations you, you desire change, but you have to sit up. In your family, in your generation, there are things that might be happening in your generation that you say, okay, this must not continue. Another man of God spoke something to me that really touched my heart. I was questioning God about some things that was going on. And he said, maybe your father, these things has been going on in your generation for years. Your father did not deal with it. Your mother did not deal with you. Or your grandmother did not deal with you. Did deal with it. Now God is calling you to deal with that situation that has been in your family for years. So now you have to sit up. You have to train and study and train yourself to battle, to challenge that powers that has been messing around with your family or your generation. So this is our month of training up. You have to work your muscle, your spiritual work, your spiritual muscle, excuse me. If we, if you or I take up a, a, a challenge today and say, okay, I'm going to start lifting weights. I'm going to start um, training myself, you know, to get in a, in a better shape. In a month, you will see a difference in your body. So it is with our spirit man. You, when you spend time in the word of God, praying and fasting, one of the things that I really recommend is just putting away distractions, making the choice that this cannot continue in my life. This sickness, this oppression, my family, it must not continue. And I'm going to sit down to train. And one of the things that have really helped me is fasting. And when I fast, I tend to put on worship song. I just lay down and prostrate before God, worshiping him. And I tell you, I was, when I pray, I feel the presence of God. Worship is also a very powerful opportunity to usher in the presence of God. Put worship songs, stay there. You can stay there 20 minutes. Before you know you are 30 minutes, before you know it's one hour, you're just bowing down and just worshiping. You will sense the presence of God. It's that time when you, you feel his presence, you just start crying and you'll be like, wow. You don't want to ever miss that opportunity to worship. And when you do that, you and you spend in time in, in the word, in praying, reading books by Kenneth Hagin, Smith Wigglesworth, and great men of God, you will definitely see it change in your life. So I want to implore you God, all this month that this month, make it a month where you want to know who you are. Who are you if you have believed the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you've received him, that you don't want to live the natural life anymore. The devil is not supposed to be tossing and toiling with you demons, witchcraft, and things like this, they are under your feet. So I pray that this word that I'm speaking with you guys will touch your heart and minister to you. Be blessed. Thank you.